You ask, and I'm delivering. It's Snoke's throne room, and not one, but two Praetorian Guard battle packs combined. Plus the Lego Magazine Elite Praetorian Guard exclusive. Up next in the Marketing Kitchen. Welcome, marketing chefs. I've got something truly special cooking in our Omni Channel oven today. Actually, my most popular video to date, I, I just can't believe how explosive this one was. It was my review of Snoke's throne room with the Elite Praetorian Guard Battle Pack. Up next in the Marketing Kitchen. Welcome to the kitchen, the Marketing Kitchen. Hi, I'm Ron Vining, your host of Marketing Kitchen TV. But I thank you for uh, tuning in today for this episode where I took a look at Snoke's throne room, where I also took a look at the Praetorian Guard battle pack. So this was from 2018 and this was from 2019. This one was a bit pricey. This is a fantastic bargain. And I'm gonna pick up a second one of these to be able to create a scene inside the throne room. And that is exactly what I did about six months after filming that video. I picked up two of the Elite Praetorian Guard Battle Packs and I combined them to create this unique set. Just take a look at one configuration. I'll show you multiple later on. You wanted to see Snoke's Throne Room and two Praetorian Guard Battle Packs put together. So that's what I'm going to share with you today. Plus the inclusion of the LEGO Magazine's exclusive Elite Praetorian Guard Foil Pack as part two of my review of those sets and a bit more. I'm also going to share with you one of my all-time favorite LEGO sets, and that is, does this speeder give you any hint? It would be Emperor Palpatine's Office from Revenge of the Sith. And in today's episode, we'll take a sneak peek at my First Order collection. And since we're talking about Snoke's throne room, as well as Palpatine's office, I want to share with you my Sith box. This might be one of my favorite ones because it features every Sith-related character that Lego has put out in minifigure form. Giving us the chance to review sets related to The Last Jedi and Snoke's throne room. This was the Elite Praetorian Guard buildable figure, which was fantastic. And what really precipitated me doing this episode was the teaser in last month's Lego magazine saying that a new Elite Praetorian Guard minifigure would be coming out. I had wanted to do this episode and this really inspired me to do so. So let's take a look before we get into Snoke's throne room of the sets from The Force Awakens, The Last Jedi, and also some from Rise of Skywalker about the First Order. And here is one of my favorites. It's our first glimpse really into, in Lego form rather, what the First Order offerings are. From the Star Destroyer to Kylo Ren's TIE Fighter, the amazing reimagining of a walker. I really love this walker. To sets that received limited to no screen time, another classic. And here's the, some of the Last Jedi sets together. This, of course, is probably the worst LEGO set in history. And we've gotten some really nice micro fighters from the Disney sequel trilogy. First Order tie to Kylo Ren's tie, walkers, including these exclusives and the battle pack. Great range. And of course, the LEGO magazine has featured a number of things from the sequel trilogy, including the ATM-6, DJ, this poly bag of Kylo Ren's shuttle, they've been two because at first Lego came out with a gray version and then a black. We've had some tremendous minifigures. And here is two Kylo Ren shuttles side by side with our first look at Knights of Ren. Just give you a quick side by side of these two. Lego in the pre-production of The Force Awakens was given the prototype. That's why the ship to the right is so different than what we saw on film. But this gray shuttle is one of my all-time favorite, and it's likely never to be reproduced again by LEGO. So this will be a treasured member of my collection. This shuttle is also larger. 
As you take a look, here are the range of vehicles we've received from the Disney sequel trilogy in the First Order range. At least my favorite, anyhow. I highlighted some others earlier, but these are really my favorite. I love the ties and I love the shuttle. Let's take a look at going into one of my cabinets here in my home. And if you haven't had a chance, please go to my May the 4th series where I looked at all of my Lego sets here in Singapore, representative of the light side, the gray side, and the dark side. This of course is the dark side box. You see some first order there and you see where my Snoke's throne room with the two battle packs has been hanging out for the past few months in anticipation of me recording this video. There's just a glimpse into uh, one of my dark side areas. What do you think? I'd love to hear your comments below. What are some of your favorite sets from uh, the Disney sequel trilogy in particular from the first order? since that's really what we're focused on in this particular video. And let's get to the figures, right? That's probably what you, you most want to see. And actually, I have a special treat for you. I've already put my uh, First Order Praetorian Guards and Snoke and Kylo Ren inside of one of my display boxes. And I showed you one of these in a prior video. And these are not official uh, by Lego. Uh, but they do have studs on them so that you can uh, uh, stand the figures inside the, the cases. And the reason why I put my uh, Star Wars minifigures in these cases is to protect them. It protects them from dust uh, and uh, also moisture. And even a, a bigger killer, I think, well, obviously light is a killer uh, for your minifigure collection or even for your Lego in general. So you want to make sure you store your Lego in a, uh, in a dark space or a, especially out of UV as well as sunlight. Uh, these cases don't protect for that, but they uh, protect against dust, moisture, and in particular, if you're cooking. So anyway, here I am in the Marketing Kitchen TV. I don't keep my Lego here, but uh, grease. So making eggs in the morning or anytime you're frying something, that grease really sticks to your Legos. So uh, you need to make sure you use ventilation in your kitchen, as I do. But even then still, it ends up getting on them. All right, let me open up this case just uh, real quickly so you can get a closer look at some of the minifigures here. This is my first order collection. And what I do by uh, box is I put a collection of minifigures in there. And uh, per, for either a particular film, a particular theme, or a particular legion. So this would be my uh, first order uh, box, if you will. This contains one of each variant of a first order trooper, uh, officer, uh, guard, or uh, again, Kylo Ren, uh, General Hux, the Praetorian Guards, as well as droids. So like BB-9E in the, in the front, uh, as well as uh, from Star Destroyer. This was a medical droid that repair, repairs uh, Kylo Ren's face. And then this uh, comes, this uh, is a training droid uh, of some sort that uh, it can be found in the battle pack that we were talking about today. So anyway, that's pretty cool. And then also too in the battle pack, it comes with three Praetorian Guards and it comes with this First Order Trooper. And what makes this First Order Trooper cool for me anyway, uh, is that all of my other First Order Troopers have the original print from The Force Awakens. In The Last Jedi, they tweaked the uh, face mask printing in the film, and then Lego also did it here too. Uh, however, if you're buying your sets from the US, this would be the first time you'd be getting that new print. If you had bought your First Order figures in Europe or some other parts of the world, then you would have gotten that print in some of the sets that had come out last year. Uh, but I did not. So this is my first one of this particular variant. And for me, anyway, it's very cool. Uh, I, I pride myself on getting well, at least one each of each variant of uh, the figures that I collect. Stress relief, right? Or hoarder or something. I don't know. It, uh, it's a good diversion from, from work. All right, let me take you through some of these First Order troops as well as my Sith storytelling boxes. And as we go through these images here, you'll see that the boxes start to get more crowded as I have added more figures to the collection. So this was as of January 11th, 2019, when the battle pack had come out, but then I began to add to that. Here is the box with all of the Sith. So remember in Rise of Skywalker, I am all of the Sith. Well, that would include those. Here is Snoke's throne room, of course, with the extra battle packs. But here's that Sith box from behind, including all of the translucent from the Death Star to Emperor Palpatine to even Supreme Leader Snoke from the Star Destroyer. 
I really love that uh, tile, the transparent one with the emperor inside. And here's the back of the storytelling box for the first order. Again, we'll take another pass through, giving you another glimpse of them inside of the cases before I take the covers off and we begin to talk about some of the figures. I'm really curious to know how each of you store your minifigures. So in the comments section below, I would love to hear uh, how do you display yours? Do you display them on the sets themselves? Do you keep them inside of Ziploc bags? Uh, do you have cases like this? Do you store them out in the open? Uh, how do you do that? And if you notice, looking at the First Order collection there, I have uh, six Praetorian guards in this particular box because I've put two others inside of the Sith box as well as uh, putting in uh, three of the different variants of uh, the Emperor's Royal Guards. Again, just trying to keep all, uh, or representation anyway, of all of the Sith in one particular uh, storytelling box, if you will. I love all of the Vaders. Uh, not every Vader is included here because I have Vader in some of the other boxes uh, where I'm depicting all Anakin Skywalkers together. Here are the boxes updated for the Rise of Skywalker. You'll notice that the box is a bit more full. But you'll see that also Von Reg is there as well as some of the awesome Sith Troopers. Knights of Ren have uh, been included at this point in time just two. But there will be six unique Knight of Ren in total by the end of August 2020 which is surprising because we still don't have the three variants of elite Praetorian guards. The red is really striking, of course, against the black and the white, but these uh, boxes are starting to get really tight, and I'm going to have to find some way uh, to, uh, to extend the First Order collection across multiple boxes. Probably doing the same thing that I've done. If you watch my in, on my May the 4th series, I did one with all of my minifigures. And for example, the Empire, I've broken up into three of these different boxes. One with officers, one with troopers. The other would contain pilots and or gunners. Pretty much just dividing them up. Again, here's another look at the Sith. At the time, I might end up moving the Knights of Ren over to this box because they're really overcrowding the First Order one. These are some of my favorite boxes. As I've mentioned, I really enjoy the minifigures from the Empire as well as the First Order and of course the Republic. All right, let's take a look at the First Order Star Destroyer. This was our first Lego glimpse of the interior of First Order ships as a precursor taking us into the throne room with just a single battle pack. All right, this is uh, from The Last Jedi. And anybody see that divisive movie? I tried to talk a little bit about marketing or branding. As I mentioned in a prior video, Marketing Kitchen TV is about ABCM, advertising, branding, communications, marketing. So always be a little bit of education as well as fun while we're in the kitchen. Talking a little bit about uh, The Last Jedi for a second before we review this set. The Last Jedi was a divisive and controversial film for both Disney, Lucasfilm, and the Star Wars franchise. And one of the reasons why, I believe anyway, that it was so divisive for, for well, some people, some people love the movie and that's great. That's what art's all about, right? Somebody produces something, some people love it, some people hate it, some people are somewhere in between. So that's cool. It doesn't matter where you fall in that particular spectrum. As a fan of Star Wars going back to 1977, when I actually saw it in the movie theater, so you can do the math about how old I may or may not be, but going way back to then, to the, the year that uh, Last Jedi came out, which was 2017, I was a bit disappointed. And the reason that I was disappointed was the fact that I felt that it didn't remain consistent to the brand values that the prior six trilogy films had established. So there was the original trilogy, which was comprised of A New Hope, The Empire Strikes Back, and Return of the Jedi. There was the prequel trilogy, so which took place before, which had The Phantom Menace, Attack of the Clones, which was also a sort of divisive film, and then Revenge of the Sith. It made the franchise what it was at the time that Disney paid over $4 billion for it. And then Disney came out with The Force Awakens, which was domestically 
the most successful film ever, domestic US box office. Then the follow-up to The Force Awakens was The Last Jedi. And I just feel that the film didn't live up to the brand of Star Wars. There were several elements that just, just inconsistent. And that would be the personality of Luke Skywalker, the way the narrative unfolded. And story elements like the Knights of Ren that were abandoned. The whole backstory behind Snoke was just simply dismissed. Such an impressive setup, similar to what we saw with the Emperor in Return of the Jedi. The mystery, the evil, the power. It looked so impressive in the previews until he was just cut in half. And so too was the story. This was probably the most exciting scene in the entire film. And that's not saying much because nothing happened in this film. What happened to the whole elements of finishing what Grandfather had started? Why didn't we ever return to Darth Vader's castle? Why did we never see Anakin Skywalker as a force ghost? And then Stoke is some random clone created by the Emperor with no explanation whatsoever? And the Knights of Ren are the Knights of Nothing? This isn't storytelling, it's silly. I don't want to get into them all here. I actually wrote a, an article about this, which I'll link to this video. And you can go to LinkedIn and read it. And I, I titled it, Revenge on the Last Jedi Fans. And it's, it's, not, um, it's not a scathing criticism of the film. There were some moments in the film that were enjoyable. And one of them is the set that I'm going to talk about. The article will really go into my critique from a brand consistency perspective. Because you as a consumer expect something from a brand. So whether that's Apple, whether that's Lego, whether it's Starbucks, or it's McDonald's, or it's Louis Vuitton, each of these brands have values uh, that they have used to make them iconic. And whenever the company doesn't uh, deliver on their brand promise, or does not remain consistent or true to that, in, that inherent set of values, then their fans or their customers or consumers, uh, there's tension there. And that inconsistency can actually turn your loyal fans away or against you, as what happened in the case of, for some anyway, of The Last Jedi. All right, that was the marketing piece there. Let's get back to the fun aspect. For me, one of the best aspects of The Last Jedi was the throne room scene. And that is where Kylo Ren comes before Supreme Leader Snoke. And Snoke has these really cool guards that harken back to the Emperor's royal guards from the original trilogy, as well as from the prequel trilogy. So this is a battle pack come with typically four minifigures and a small build. And in another video, I'll talk to you about why you just can't buy individual Lego Star Wars minifigures. Lego is able to sell you four figures with a tiny build. They're representative in the battle pack. In another video, I'll tell you why it's that way. So this battle pack was quite cool because it's the follow-up to a set that came out last year. And that set that came out last year, and I've been waiting till I started this channel to talk about this one, and I've been waiting for that battle pack to come out so that I could. This is Snoke's throne room. And in this particular depiction here, is when Kylo Ren brings Rey before Supreme Leader Snoke, and there's different agendas here. Rey is here thinking that she can persuade Kylo Ren to abandon the dark side of the Force, and Supreme Leader Snoke has orchestrated all of this because he believes that he can either turn Rey to the dark side, or he can extract from her the location of the whereabouts of Luke Skywalker, which was the whole premise of The Force Awakens. So this battle pack is a fantastic companion to this because it adds more guards and it adds a little play feature that you can add to the throne room. The battle pack comes with an instruction booklet. I've already packed away the instruction booklet for Snoke's throne room, so sorry, I can't show you that. But what I want to show you, and I mentioned it in a prior video, is a QR code on the front, and there's a Lego Life app. You uh, scan the QR code, and then the instructions will download into the app. And I think that's fantastic for those of you that uh, want to be able to sort of enlarge the size of, of the instructions, which of course you can't do with, in the real world without a magnifying glass, right? I think that's pretty cool. 
It's a great place to store everything. And for Lego, I think it's a fantastic idea because they can save money. They can save the environment in the future if they decide to, again, do away the booklet, as I mentioned, in the future. I don't think they'll do it this year. I don't think they'll do it next year, but I think they'll do that on the year after that. And then from a marketing perspective, I think it's a fantastic CRM tool for Lego to be able to track who purchases which sets and how they interact with them. And I'll do a feature at some point on the Lego Life app, because anyway, I think that that's pretty cool. Let me show you the Snoke's throne room here. Anyway, it's a quite fun build. I'm a big fan of the Empire, and so obviously I like the, the First Order because there's a lot of similarities to the design of the ships and the interiors and the weaponry and of course the stormtroopers and the guards and things of that nature. So anyway, that's quite cool. So anyway, this is the set and within the battle pack, there's just this mini micro build, which has a fun little play feature there. And I really think I'm going to end up getting myself a second battle pack. And then you can add the, you can just sort of display the extra little piece. If you have two of them, you can put one on this side, one on this side, and you can line up the guards. And that's actually what happened in the film. So if you want to have a display piece, you could get two of these battle packs and you get Snoke's throne room and you put them together. You'll end up between Snoke's throne room, which comes with two guards, as well as the battle pack, which comes with three guards each. You'll end up with eight. And there were eight Praetorian guards protecting Supreme Leader Snoke in the film. For me, that was the highlight of The Last Jedi. I encourage you to take a look at that. Actually, the throne room is used twice in The Last Jedi. Those were actually two of the best scenes in the film for me. They I wouldn't say they redeemed the film, but they made the film enjoyable. And if, whenever I watch, rewatch the film, which sadly hasn't been many times, unlike other Star Wars films, uh, I do appreciate or look forward to those scenes. Let's now take a look at Snoke's throne room and the two companion battle packs. I really, really love these elite Praetorian guards in Snoke's throne room set with the dress legs or the cloak style legs as opposed to the typical minifigure legs which can be found in the elite Praetorian guard battle pack. They do offer unique weapons however and of course the companion build which is a nice complement to the throne room. The minifigure in the Lego magazine retains the same headpiece found in both of the sets. However, it has a unique weapon. These two sets, it really comes with some of the coolest minifigures to come out of the Last Jedi film. Which can either be displayed or played on this extended Snoke's throne room set by combining two of the mini builds from the battle pack to the throne room set itself. So you can either recreate your favorite scenes from The Last Jedi, or you can play director and storyteller and create scenes that we never received. The ones that we had hoped for, like having Luke Skywalker challenge Snoke in this throne room. Oh, to think about the possibilities of what never was. Battle packs, as you can see here, the builds, you can put them in just about any configuration that you'd like. Again, recreating scenes from the film itself or just mixing it up to display whatever works for you. I'm just giving you a few examples of without doing any modifications whatsoever of ways you could display Snoke's throne room without requiring any modifications whatsoever. I really do enjoy this build. This is probably the not only the best scene out of The Last Jedi, but it is probably one of the best sets to come from The Last Jedi with Kylo Ren's tie, the walker, and perhaps the Star Destroyer rounding that out. So we did receive some cool sets from what was an uncool film. But as you see, there's just limitless possibilities of how you could just take these two companion builds and pair them to the throne room to make for a really cool and unique display piece. And as I mentioned, having the throne room 
with two of the Elite Praetorian Guard battle packs, you now have the eight guards that you saw in the film. Although LEGO has yet to give us the third type of Praetorian Guard, so they will be duplicated. And it's a bit odd that LEGO hasn't just given us the third head because one of the, it comes in black currently, but one of the first order officers with uh, the, or technician, if you will, that headpiece in black with the visor down is pretty similar to what uh, we saw on screen for the Praetorian guards. So just a simple coloring in red with a couple of tweaks and we would have all three unique helmets. I'd now like to close out this video by sharing with you one of my all-time favorite sets and that is Palpatine's Arrest. I have a real infinity for Snoke's throne room because it does remind me of two iconic scenes from the prequel and original trilogy, those being Palpatine's Arrest and the Death Star Final Duel. I really enjoy these sets, as I know many of you do as well. Let's do a side-by-side -side comparison of these with a little surprise. All right, we've taken a look at Snoke's throne room with the addition of the two Praetorian Guard battle packs, making this a more complete set, if you will. My First Order collection pre-Rise of Skywalker sets. One of my favorite all-time play sets, which is Emperor Palpatine's office from Revenge of the Sith. And speaking of Sith, of course, the entire Sith collection all in one spot. So now that we've taken a look at these, why don't we go over to the Death Star where we'll take a look at Emperor Palpatine's throne room in my Super Death Star 2. We've looked at Snoke's throne room, Palpatine's office. Now let's turn this around and see Emperor Palpatine's throne room in the Death Star 2. But wait, surprise! Somehow Snoke's throne room has found itself in the equatorial trench of the Super Death Star. Alright, here is the Death Star Final Duel set that came out a few years ago that's been integrated into my Super Death Star. I just thought it was appropriate to put it in here. Uh, I really like the way LEGO had designed this particular set. In fact, I was loving this set so much, I often regretted that I had put it inside my Super Death Star. Well, regret no more, because the leak of the Summer 2020 LEGO catalog shows us that we'll be getting another Death Star Final Duel set. So now I don't need to buy two, I can just buy this one. And then there's the leak of the two new Knights of Ren. So again, looking at Palpatine's arrest as a comparison to the Final Duel, as well as Snoke's throne room with the two companion battle packs builds to extend that particular set as I've shown you in some video here. I think it just is a compelling offering. As a close, I just really wish that Kylo Ren and perhaps Snoke visited Darth Vader's castle in The Last Jedi or The Rise of Skywalker. All right, this video is capping out at the 30 minute mark and I always try to keep uh, uh, the Lego videos can certainly go on longer because people will take the time to watch. If we're talking pure marketing, they certainly won't. Thank you for uh, tuning in today for this episode where I took a look at the Lego Magazine Elite Praetorian Guard Foil Pack, Snoke's Throne Room. I also took a look at the Praetorian Guard Battle Pack. So this was from 2018 and this was from 2019. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Remember, there's always fresh content simmering on our storytelling stovetop. So whatever happens in this kitchen shouldn't stay in this marketing kitchen. I'm Ron Vining, your host, reminding you to invite your family and friends to the next episode of Marketing Kitchen TV.